how is New York City? So at the risk of committing blasphemy, I'm loving New York City. What's it's there to love about New York City? Everything. You know, it's, uh, it's, uh, it just, I mean, it sounds cliche, but the vibe of the city, there is incredible diversity. You, mm. I love that you walk around everywhere. Mm -hmm. I don't have a car. I take the train and I walk. Mm. And um, and you s you know you like the train station there, the public train station, which is used by the billionaire hedge fund guy, and the homeless person, mm. and you are in the same station, mm. and you 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 know you you take your train, you arrive, and you hear a string quartet play. Oh yeah. At, <laughs> at eight a.m. in the morning. Mm. You know, I mean, you know, I I know it's it's but that you can't beat that and. Mm. Um, I, I like, the, there's a certain deep uh, liberal value there. The idea that there's a freedom to be who you are, to be crazy in the way you want to be crazy. You know, of course, there's deep inequality. People struggle a lot. Things are tough for mm. many people. But in many ways, there's a kind of fundamental ethos around you can be what you want to be. Yeah. Um, and, and, and there's something about that openness that, that I love. Is there and a tour with the spirit in New York, you think? In the, in the definition of the word tour with yes, we can, we can do it, it's, it's about us. Or what do you think? Is it there in New York or is it not? I, I think the short answer is not enough. Um, but I was saying to some people that, you know, the difference between now, of course, when you speak like this, you often just overgeneralize. But one of the things that's been wonderful for me is to meet so many people in what you might call civil society, both the formal kind and the informal kind. Mm -hmm. For example, there's a guy called Mo, who happens to have a partner who works here at CCBRT in, mm -hmm. in Dar, and I, and I met him here in Dar first. And he's been organizing around Ferguson, around South Carolina, with these shootings of young black men where, you know, white police officers are killing young black men. And, and you hear his stories and how they're organizing, and you hear every day I have the privilege, literally every day, of listening to dozens of people who are incredibly sharp analytically, mm. who are really committed to doing work, but in a thoughtful way, who are working 20 hours a day, who are making amazing things happen despite very difficult circumstances. Mm. And, you know, even though it's a politically incorrect thing to say, I love that vibrancy of civil society, which you don't have so much of here. Mm. You have it, but much less so. So, so let me I ask find you it this inspired. One. Yeah. Mm. So what do you miss about Tuaweza then? The Tuaweza you left behind. <laughs> <laughs> you love New York. We're feeling a bit orphaned here. Uh, right? uh -huh. I don't get that sense. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I saw bright, shiny people, and I say, ah, mono na pendeza leo. They say, ah, you know, this is the new era at Tuaweza. So I think they're doing fine. <laughs> Buttering people, me up, right? People are more beautiful. You know, um, I don't know what you what makes that happen. But, uh, so yeah. is that who you're missing? <laughs> you're missing beautiful people. I'm missing Tuaweza. beautiful people. No, I mean, all, in all seriousness, I do. With this, I know it's a kind of saccharine thing to say. But I, I, I do miss the people. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, again, more blasphemy, but I, I, don't, I don't miss the work so much. I think the work is great, but I don't miss the Tuaweza work. I don't, as sad really? as it is to say, I don't, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I mean, I appreciate like I was saying earlier in the board meeting today, I appreciate, for example, the transparency and openness and the self-critique culture that Tuaweza has. Yeah. Ford doesn't have it, for example. Okay. And, uh, you know, I think there's a lot a place like the Ford Foundation can learn from a, a place like Tuaweza. Um, so there is all of that that I appreciate, but I, I don't miss uh, Tanzania and our, you know, and maybe it's maybe I'm just the you know the fresh kid on the block who's a bit starry, starry eyed, eyed, starry -eyed about New York about mm. New York. Maybe that's that, and mm. maybe let me enjoy it then. <laughs> if that is the case. <laughs> uh -huh. But but it's it's nice to have to be in a context where um, there are deep struggles, but people are serious about doing them, and and things move. You know, mm. I I think for me. You, when you are in New York, uh, you get a perspective of how much we, you know, they s I think the story of Tanzania, particularly in Kenya and Uganda, East Africa more generally, uh, but is I think we are wasting, we are squandering opportunity. Mm -hmm. We have so much going for us that we could harness, e even if we get it a quarter right, yeah. but we seem to not get it even 5% right. So I, I, 
that hurts and, and, and it's totally unnecessary. And, and the nice thing, the refreshing thing about in that way in the States is you, you have a density of people in civil society, in the media, in the art space, in government, mm. in academia, who are serious, doing serious thinking, serious work, serious engagement. Um, yeah, and again, I, I wish I, as a Tanzanian, I feel a little bit ashamed of saying this, but hatuna uh, seriousness happen of mm. that kind. And uh, it's refreshing to see, to be surrounded by it. You know, maybe, maybe a year from now when the rosy spectacles are off my eyes, I'll tell a different story. Like, <laughs> uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> let's, let's go back a little bit uh, in, your own, on, in your own history. It's, it turns out that our paths, you and I, crossed mm. before we even met. Mm. And they crossed uh, through either a hamster or a rat. I don't remember what, <laughs> what's, what's involved hamster. here. But in Wanza, where mm. you were born and where I was born, my father was working in the Medical Research Institute and they were conducting experiments on these rodents. Mm. And then you told me... Cute, cute hamsters. Cute, cute hamsters. Mm. cute hamsters. Mm. And that you conspired mm. with some friends to mm. steal No, these. rescue. Sorry. Rescue, rescue, rescue. Don't the right word. Uh. Rescue. Yeah, liberate, uh, I you think. You really have become a New Yorker. <laughs> uh, to rescue these um, trapped, yeah. cute hamsters yeah. because you thought it was unjust for them to be... Uh, experimented mm. on uh, mm. by these horrible human beings, um, one well. of whom was my father. Mm. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, from hamsters to mm. street children with kuleana to mm. all children in Haki Elimu to all citizens with Tuaweza, three organizations you started, why? What, what is your interest? What is driving you? What do you want? <laughs> Fame and fortune. <laughs> <laughs> There are easier ways, <laughs> surely. Yeah? But you've built up this uh, um, group of, of cutting edge, uh, flaky sometimes organizations uh, at the outset, and yet they gain traction. Why? So what are you after? What is it that you want? You know, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure there's a kind of pure motive, but I, um, I think it's fun to you know, work for social justice. It, um, just think of, of the privilege of, um, of being able to work on something that matters to the world, that you care about, uh, and having people to work with and resources to put. I mean, gosh, how much more lucky can you get in life? You know, I, um, you know, I, I grew up in a, in a family where, um, you know, my, uh, the biggest aspiration my parents could have was to be able to have their own shop in the, mm -hmm. in the central market, so-called in, in Mwanza mm. and uh, but that was you know the choice was that or having some menial job and uh, you know he used to he used to be the conductor for Tanganyika bus services and so the the, the highest aspiration you could have is and that's what they did all their lives you know mm -hmm. uh, and um, so where did your aspirations to do the social justice uh, come from why did uh, you not a, want to have a I think that's shop? a very long story I think uh, you know it's a combination of uh, um, I think I, I fell in love with my teachers in primary school who are doing, who are there because they had a mission. Mm -hmm. the, the idea that you could, you could have a mission in life, mm -hmm. and I'm using the word mission <coughs> deliberately, right? These are Christian fun, uh, missionaries. Mm -hmm. um, but there was something very attractive for you giving your life to something you believe in and, you, and getting joy from that. These, these are teachers, four of them sharing a house, getting paid relatively low amounts of money, who had foregone you know, much higher. Mm -hmm. And I saw joy. I saw, you know, I saw joy in their lives and, and purpose and meaning and fulfillment, and I, I wanted to be like them. And then, uh, you know, and then other people, I had a history teacher in Moshi when I went for secondary school who was a, a communist from Liverpool. <laughs> uh, you know, and I from uh, missionaries the, to communists. Yeah, they are very close. They are not very different. Yeah, okay. You know, if you look at liberation theology, this, you know, they are okay. more or less they are two yeah. sides of the same coin. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, both of them care about, you know, righting the wrongs in the world and and and, and realizing God's kingdom. Mm -hmm. So, um, <laughs> so I, uh, I, uh, yeah, I, I was attracted, I think, to their lives, and I wanted to live that life myself. And the more I experienced it, I it felt, you know, I, I, I think the. Think we do it for ourselves you know mm -hmm. we don't do it to help anybody we do it for ourselves and it's i have 
I feel incredibly blessed with a rich people, life. Few people would admit that. Many would say, ah, you know, because my mission is to help others and to be a bit patronizing and yeah. self-satisfied about it. Uh, and you're willing to admit that, you know, you get pleasure and joy out of feeling a and sense meaning of And meaning and purpose. Yeah. Mm. You know, I was, I was also the patronizing kind. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, you just umelele wa hivyo, right? Do you, you yeah. think you're... So I, I was, but then I had the fortune of, the, of uh, working with homeless people in Boston when I went to school there. Right. And these were young black men who had grown up in the projects. And there was one time I, was, I used to work in a soup kitchen, uh, a place called Haley House. And there was this one time where, you know, these guys were being unruly, they were not lining up properly and not listening to the, you know, not following the rules and so on. And yeah. I, it was, I had it. I, at one point I just, particularly to this, this guy, his name was Roy, and I said to him, you know, I, I am not, you know, I bust my ass doing this for you. I don't have to do this. I could, you know, I'm trying to help you and you guys just, you don't even appreciate it. Yeah. And I'm saying this to a guy who's three times my size. Right? <laughs> and he looked at me and he, he just, I don't think he even needed to use force, but he just took my arm and took me out. Mm -hmm. And around the corner was a park, it was a parking garage. He took me there. He almost lifted me magically. I, he put me on the bonnet of some car. <laughs> And, and I would not, because we are being recorded, I should not use the words that he used. He used uh, yeah. But for about three minutes, he used every expletive. Uh, <laughs> and, and then he paused, and then he, he basically taught me a lesson that not for a second yeah. should you dare to patronize anybody. Mm. You're not doing any favors to me. And, you know, it was, a, it was a good lesson. It was also a lesson about... In my own way, you know, being a Muhindi kid in, in Tanzania, you also have uh, the, the race and the racism is a very complex thing. Yeah. And I think partly what he was also doing was ch challenging my racism, you know, uh, and, as well as my privileged guy help, you know, helping a, a guy was out. And I, I think that was a very deep lesson. I, I doesn't mean I always learn it, but it, it has mm. it has you seared in it. my memory. Oh, very. Oh, I I, I could I could <laughs> I close my eyes and I'm there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. So let's fast forward now to Tuaweza. You've yeah. done uh, Kuleana, Haki Elimu. Um, so Tuaweza was supposed to be a modest organization, yeah. right? Three people, a small room. Uh, by the end of June of this year, 2015, we shall have almost 80 people and rather a large budget. What went wrong? <laughs> Clearly, it's the current leadership that is... Uh, <laughs> what happened to a lean startup? I, I think know? this three is a bit of a... Between Yudi and my wife, they have kind of created some fiction around three. But it's true, it was supposed to be eight. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so eight to eight is, uh, I guess, a tenfold. Yes. Yeah, I... Um, yeah, I think, I think, uh, no, in all seriousness, um, to do hard work, you need strategy, you need resources, but at the end, it all comes down to people. Mm -hmm. If you have good people, even if you have a half-baked strategy, the good people will figure out the strategies half-baked and figure it out. But I, I really think it's people. And one of the big lessons of Tuareza was, was, is that we felt that if we just pepper the world with some ideas and facts and information and stories yeah. that people themselves will self-organize and connect and make things wonderful things happen. And I think the reality and the evidence showed that it doesn't happen like that. And if you look at the history of any movement, you know, we, we talk a lot about spontaneous revolutions, uh, right. Tari Square, the, it never is like that. It mm. takes a huge amount of hard, hard work, hard organizing, and um, and I think Tuaweza realized that uh, we we need to put that put that work in. The other thing is when you run an organization, uh, the it's not the thing we talk about often, but the bureaucracy matters. What makes Tuaweza successful is not only uh, impressive, articulate uh, people like you, but it's also people like Richard Modest who make sure you take care of the money and and, mm. and Nancy and Emmanuel and the others in that team and and many others. So all that needs needs people. But I, that said, I do think on the, while eight is too small, there is, and maybe Kevin and Dana from Hewlett can talk about it, because they have, at Hewlett Foundation, they have a, 
also a kind of hard number that they yeah. don't grow more so there is also you lose there are certain things you lose when your when your number gets too big so how how in in in, in this growing um what do you think attracted people to come and walk down this crazy path with you uh to you know you talk about this you're motivated by self-interest so how do you what attracted what about Twaweza? what how do you sell Twaweza to the really talented team of people you've left so i'll say one thing and then I, so i would say self-interest as as much as when you care about the public interest you, you you're not doing anybody out there any favors Favorite. you're doing it because it's great for you as well but yeah. it, but there's difference between self-interest and public interest mm. Um, so I would say, why people came? I think the camera should now turn in that direction <laughs> and, ask, and uh, ask people. But why do you think they came? What was your pitch? I think people care deeply about uh, certain values in life. Uh, they connect with human experience. They connect with uh, being able to make a world uh, you know, a better place. And, and I think people search for that. Many people, not everybody, many people search for that. And I think... In Tuaweza, uh, some people saw that, ah, this, is, this resonates with what they believe in mm -hmm. and what they care about. And so they said, ah, let me be part of this, part of this place. Um, and, and, you know, I think once you are there, I think people love the, as painful as it is, I think people love that there are standards. People mm -hmm. love that you care about quality. Uh, as again, like I say, in the moment when you get that feedback saying this needs to, you know, we need Improved. to get better, you know, it's hard. But people love that. People, mm. it, it, it takes, it means, it says to, to you as an employee that I take you seriously mm. and I have high expectations of you. And, and I think it, it, it communicates the idea, which is what I started off by saying about what I, communicates the idea that being serious matters, doing something as well as you can matters, uh, thinking hard uh, matters continually continually learning I mean ev I do not know of a single person who has left Traweza yeah who has not said I mean there, I think there are people who did not enjoy themselves mm. I think there are people who are really un you know who left thinking ah this was not my place or are unhappy about some key things right but not a single person has left Traweza I think uh, glory and others can correct me without feeling I have learned and grown so much I mean people make slightly flamboyant statements like I learned more in one year to Aweza than five years in university. Yeah. No, and I think people like that. Mm. So I think that's why they come. But it would be good to ask. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, so you three times at least, it, I know you've, you've taken, you've started organizations, you've walked down these uncharted paths, uncharted territories. Um, what have you learned from that experience? You know, what, what, what would you advise a young person watching this? Say, you know, I want to be like Rakesh. I want to start my own version of a Tuawez or a Kelly. What should I look out for that? What lessons can you leave me with? What should I avoid and what should I do? Pick one of each. Uh, um, so first, I think, and I, and I know this is now being uh, hypocritical, but... I, I think um, I think too many of us want to start our own organizations. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I think there are enough organizations. Sometimes I think we need to strengthen the ones we have, uh -huh. and uh, you know, not have be as egomaniacal as I have been and start my own thing. So I think what the first thing I would say is, and it's it's a lot of pain. Mm. You know, I'm so happy I'm at Ford. <laughs> <laughs> and not starting now, not gonna, uh, mm -hmm. so I would say that. But I think, look, if you if you want to, so this may not answer your question, but let me maybe it'll help. Mm. Um, there are many young people who, and I think there's a whole field out there in East Africa now that coaches you about career. It's called career guidance. Yeah. Like, plan for your career. Think about your career. I I think that's hogwash. I uh, I think nobody should plan for their career. Really? Yeah, I really think I don't know. Well, unless you, maybe if you want to be a successful banker, Why or something. Not? You know, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm an unsuccessful banker, right? <laughs> you see, but, but you why finally not? saw the light and came <laughs> yeah. back. Uh, I I don't know. I think I think it 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 is such a sad thing. It forces you to pay attention to things that maybe you should. I think you should 
life is, you know, you only live once and all of that. And, you know, you, you should follow, you should do, the question to ask is, what is worthwhile in life and what will give you joy? Mm -hmm. And do that. Mm -hmm. And if you do it well and you do it with abandon and you do it with seriousness, you know, I, I realize I'm giving now advice to a, a fairly elite group, but I think that's, you know, but for that group, that's all that's enough. Mm. You know, and then the things will, you know, look at the lilies in the field, <laughs> is what I would say. You You're know, preaching. You, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, they yeah. neither weave nor sew, right? Yeah. Uh, but they are wonderfully clothed. Yeah. Um, so you don't have you, to finish that. What, uh, would you, <laughs> what, what would you do differently? When you look back at seven, eight, ten years, uh, but if you're specific to Tuaweza, what would you do differently? Knowing what you know now. Um, I would um, take the time and develop the discipline to, to stop, to be quiet, to listen more than I did, to, to appreciate people more. I think my biggest, um, my biggest failure was that I got so caught up with the work that I did not take time to appreciate the people who made that work happen. Mm. Uh, I, th I hope that in their own way they knew that that was a certain disability of mine and they knew that somehow I appreciated it. So that's at least what I say to comfort myself. <laughs> uh, but, uh, okay. but I think that's what I would do differently. Mm -hmm.